So I have an upcoming Mad Max video I'm working on and plan to use a technique I've been playing around with. Instead of breaking that technique down in the Mad Max video, I felt it would be better to explain it separately in its own video and then I could reference it in later videos. The tool I'll be using, as if you didn't already know, is a laser. In messing around with this laser, I found that I could remove the paint off of a Hot Wheels car with ease and started thinking of ways I could use this in my customs. One of the more interesting ways of using the laser is in what I call paint cutting. In this process, I use the laser to etch an image into the original paint of the car. Mattel uses rather thick paint, and so I can get a rather interesting textured effect. The dairy delivery you're watching now was an early attempt at a multi-layer effect that I have not perfected just yet, and one that I'm still working on. In this video, I plan to showcase simple single-layer texturing with the laser. This video is just for fun as I have no expectations that other customizers have a laser at their disposal. The car I'll be showing this technique on is the new Hot Wheels Porsche 917 LH. This car is perfect as it has a low profile and is relatively flat. The laser cannot cut the paint on the sides of the car, so cars with low profiles look the best. You can always turn the car on its side and then use the laser, but matching up patterns or images would be rather difficult. Another nice feature of this car is that the back is straight. This will be important later as having a flat, straight surface in the back makes lining up the car much easier. The first thing I'll do is to take the car apart. I'm using a full spectrum hobby laser. This is their upgraded 45 watt UV water cooled laser. As I stated before, I'm not expecting others to have one of these, so I'll not bore you with its operation. I will say that it's as easy as using a normal printer. You load in the image, resize, and hit print. Before I can print the image, I will need to align the car to the y-axis of the laser. To do this, I use a metal block that I know is perfectly square. I place the block against the body of the laser and then the car against the block. Since the block is taller than the car, I must remove it as I don't want the laser head to crash into it. I hold the car down with one hand and remove the block with the other. I then center the laser to the car. With the car aligned, I can start the laser. Here you can see it sped up several times. For this custom, I chose a simple black and white bitmap pattern I downloaded from the internet. I find this works best for paint. In other substances like wood and leather, the laser can put in gradations by changing the laser power. This doesn't work on paint, and I'll be painting over the image anyway. The laser has two modes, the raster mode I'm using right now, and a vector mode that I use for cutting. The raster mode works like a printer starting at the top of the image and working down, while the vector mode works like an old plotter drawing lines from point to point. Both modes work on the paint and both have advantages and disadvantages. Here you can see a close-up of the car body after the laser was done. Since I used a black and white image, the lines in the paint are very sharp and given the thickness of the paint, each paint section is slightly raised. I'm working on a polishing method I'll show off in another custom that brings out the metal between the paint. But for this car, I'm just going to paint it black. The slight difference in the texture between the painted sections and the metal lines give the impression that the car has a black on black paint job. Once the paint dries, I will seal it in with a matte clear coat. After the clear coat dries, I'll go around the car with some enamel paint in a chrome pen and a toothpick to add in some color details. I realize this is a car from the 1970s and would never sport this type of look. However, curiosity got the better of me, and I decided to give it a shot. I'm sure you can think of many other ways to use this technique, so please give me your thoughts and ideas below. I've been working on some other interesting multi-layered methods that I will probably show in a later video. I have several new videos in the works, including a new Mad Max video that should be out next week. I want to thank everyone for watching, and I'll catch you next time.